say this with an exact speed. Yeah. yeah. If you if you rush to uh, 7-Eleven right now, they got a big gulp right there, baby. You thought big gulps were out? They're not. This thing will fit two cans. And you can get, and they'll give you, the 7-Eleven will give you them in for Surfside. You can't beat that. Look at this. You want, look, first off, are you hot and bothered? Just stare inside this cup. Look at that. Woo! If that ain't cooling you off right now in this heat wave, I don't know what the hell is going to. Okay. Go Phils. Hey folks, welcome to Playing in Traffic and today's episode is coming to you from South Broad Street. And of course, I'm not the only person asking why. Why is it South Broad Street? Well, it's South Broad Street because it's right in this location here. One of the greatest events that I've ever experienced happened. And let me set it all up right now. Here we have the Broad Street line. Uh, I would say that, well, southbound side of the street at South Street. Broad and South Street. And most people that know me probably already know what this video is going to be all about. Because right here in this location, uh, not in existence any longer was none other than the legendary Love Hall. Um, I don't know how many doors in it was. Okay, I remember getting re re ready for this. 57 years old, don't remember everything, but remembers the night of December 17th, 1983 as a 17-year-old. And, 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 and as a 17-year-old from Oxford Circle, I think I actually took the subway from City Hall because we were uh, coming down from Oxford Circle, of course. And would go to Bridge and Pratt, took the L to City Hall. City Hall, I don't know why we took the subway. We could have just walked. I think it was free, though. You got the, trans the transfer. I got a free ride on the Broad Street line. Walked up this flight of steps and then looked for Love Hall. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, my experience up until that point going to concerts was at was the Philadelphia Spectrum, um, I think JFK Stadium. And I remember my parents, and I documented this on my Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey video. Uh, my parents took me and my buddies to see, uh, well, they went to the casinos, but I went and saw Ozzy Osbourne. And I think that was 1981 or 82, okay? Somewhere around there. So the first time I saw a punk rock hardcore show, it was right here, right in this area, okay? Right or somewhere, or in here, in this window. And that was Love Hall. Came up from the top of these steps, looked around, I literally had no idea what the frick I was looking for because I was never there, um, never saw pictures of it. And here it was basically a house. And that house was, like I said, it was probably, I don't know, about 30 feet in here, somewhere in the middle of this giant building. And the flyer. Um, oh, yeah, another exciting thing that's going to happen with this video is that it's going to be full of links. And it's going to be full of a link from the band that played that night because that set is on YouTube in all its glory. Husker Du. It was Husker Du, the Minutemen, FOD, and Circle of Shit. All right here, December 17th. It was a street level entrance to the freaking building. And it was like, I, I just remember that part. And what's this? I always got to wonder what's laying in the street. Uh, that's what I think, anyway. Anyway, yeah, like, and it was a hell of a night, and it changed my life forever to the point that, um, well, I got grounded because, honestly, honestly, I think I got home at somewhere around 2.30 in the morning. Um, you know, it was one of them things where you're like, oh, I wonder, 
you know, my parents, uh, it was what it was. It, oh, what time did it start? Uh, 10. What time are you going to be home? Ah, uh, midnight. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I got home at 2. Got grounded. Um, but it was the greatest thing ever. It was just uh, the energy of it, the, the role of it, you know, really digging punk and hardcore that, that you know, I still do, of course, obviously. And, um, yeah, it was just pay my dues, um, be grounded. And then, I don't know the exact date that it happened, but then this happened. So this building here was the second building that I went to. The first show I went to was at Love Hall. It was somewhere around here. And then the second one was at the Long March. I think at the time it was called Long, Long March Dance Society. You still, there's still stuff written. It's an, it says Arts Bank. Um, I'm really not familiar with what that is. I do see dance. Uh, it's obviously still arts based. So uh, University Arts, did they own it back then? I'm not sure. Long March Dance Society, and that was on the second floor. They had this dope ass set of steps that kind of where you entered the center of the floor, the middle of the floor of that second floor. And I remember, I think that night I saw TSOL and UK subs, I think it was. Um, and not too far, too not too long after that, I saw a black flag there. Um, I think that was on the slipping in tour. Uh, with the meat puppets. Uh, I forget who else was on that bill. But, um, so this is it. I'm trying to, like, establish, like, South Broad Street, like, this whole area. And now you kind of look at it, and it's like, it, there's not there's not much to remind you other than this video that this all happened here. Massive shows at Love Hall. Um, I'm going to see if I can conjure up some of the flyers. I was only there once. I don't know how many shows happened after I went. I don't think there was a whole lot, and then that was that option was shut down. Long March did some did some gigs there for a little bit of time, and um, all of Broad and South Street. Now you look at it, and it's like, yeah, uh, I don't know the closest venue. I, I certainly don't. Know, yeah, I don't know where that would be. But there was a time and place where this was just the headquarters for hardcore punk some of the most kick-ass all the touring bands came through here um probably as way back as 1983 maybe even earlier than that 82 and probably through i think till late 84 maybe 85 here at the long march yeah so it, it was a whole that was a whole event um, mind blowing and I was taken over and f at 57 it's still a thing for me I mean obviously it's one of the one of my integral ways to uh, my own therapy and music listening and experience and songwriting and performing and all that good stuff yeah it's all you know hello yeah, it's all like, all tied in with hardcore and punk rock music. And yeah, absolutely great memories. So that's Broad and South. Let me see what else I can come up with. Off of South Broad or on South Broad? Let's go, let's go take a peek down a little further north. So here I am right out front of the Kimmel Center. At, well, in between... Well, just, just north of Pine Street on Broad. And I, I want to show you this building. Do you mind? So like I said, this video is going to have a ton of links. Um, Joe Hardcore used to book in here. This is Broad Street Ministry. And they had a ton of great shows. And I would be remiss to not mention... You know, one wheeling up Broad Street, this place, because January 14th, 2011, I cannot believe that was well over 13 years ago, Peg and Babies played in here in, uh, on Joe's Winter Jam show, and it was full of uh, 
let me just say, like, it was a tremendous night. I'm gonna, I don't remember the layout of this place at all, um, but it looks, the church part of it looks beautiful. Matter of fact, I remember playing on a floor and I feel like they had these, it was a pretty big floor, but it also had a, um, uh, a secondary floor wrapping around it. I don't think there was necessarily anyone on it, but it looked like you could stand there, like maybe one or two people could stand there. They had a railing there. Uh, you could peek over. It was literally about maybe, I don't know, 10 feet off the floor. But uh, yeah, Broad Street Ministries, 315 South Broad, only covering about three or four locations today. Um, so as not to completely bore my audience, but like, it's interesting how so many different pieces of the city be, had had such an impact from a venue standpoint for punk rock and hardcore bands. I'm sure I'm sure most genres of music, you know, West Philly, South Broad. Um, I remember seeing a show on North Broad. Um, Northern Liberties, like Fishtown area. South Philly, like every, there's a lot of significant areas where there was a significant amount of performances in the city. Uh, are all metropolitan cities like that? I, I don't know. But um, I know here there was probably five or six different areas of the city over the course of the decades that really had a strong presence to go see live punk rock and hardcore. And oh, by the way, it's time for me to plug the following. Folks, on Saturday, oh, no, let me change the, I almost said Saturday, it's not Saturday. Take two. Folks, on Friday night, July 12th, the world of punk and hardcore return to none other than, hello, how are you? I'm swell, yourself? Good, I'm good, very You're good. On, uh... Nah, it's going to be all YouTube, Mikey, Mikey underscore heels. What do you do? Uh... Ride this thing all over the place, all That's over so the, back to the future. It is. Yeah. Have a great night. She literally just does not care. That's fine. Um, take three. Folks, on Friday night, July 12th, the world of punk and hardcore returned. Look, 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 look. Well, return to the fire. 412 West Gerard Avenue. And on that night, you will see none other than Pissan. We got Pissan coming in, along with Philly's own rubbish. The heels will be there, and none other than, all the way from New York City itself, the Blackout Shoppers. So come on down. Don't be shy. Give it a try. What a great night, Friday, July 12th. Again. At the fire, 412 West Gerard Avenue. Let's go. So out, out front, uh, the Kibble Center, they have a bunch of these little plaques. And this one, this this one, unfortunately, this gentleman. Look at that. You go, buddy. Look at this. They got the roots right there. Legendary multi Grammy winning hip hop band. Uh, Curator, curators of culture, music, and uh, that, whatever that word. What? But that's it. The roots. There's a couple other good ones here too. Let's see. I thought I saw Cinderella. I, I'm not. I could care less about that. What else we got? Look at these things. Uh. No. No. I know, you're, you're probably mad because I'm going so fast. Sister Sledge. Yes. So, how about that? Sister Sledge. Shout out to my Uncle Billy. And he'll know what I mean when I say Sister Sledge. Because he did a little thing with Sister Sledge. Very interesting that that was sitting here. Sister Sledge. So that, what else are we looking at? Soul Survivors. Uh, 
Jill Scott. Yeah, let's do that. Final stop this evening is going to be just west of 21st Street on Chestnut, and it's going to be this place right here, the First Unitarian Church. Folks, like I was saying, I'm going to put a ton of links. You know, I'd like you to take a peek and check these links out of all these special places. And this one is probably, I got to be honest with you, this one is probably the most iconic of all of them because there was just absolutely everybody played the First Unitarian Church. It was, uh, it is, and I think it's still being used. I'm not positive, but it is a absolute iconic venue um and again joe hardcore booked us so that was a dude did you know my day and age it was a guy named chuck me and there were other people booking in the uh early to mid 80s there, there was other people booking but uh he joe is certainly that guy for decades decades of, of absolutely the best punk and hardcore acts touring and they all and a number number of facilities this is one of them though the first unitarian church and i'm going to post again i'm going to post um some links to uh great gigs that were here uh peg and babies were blessed to have some really nice shows in this building um three of them that i can remember one of them was the reunion show. Um, a lot of that stuff, what is this thing on the screen? Oh, look, it's on my mustache. Ah, now it's on my nose, okay. Yeah, um, tons of gigs, and, and really the, one, of the most, uh, one of the most super memorable ones was in 2007, when the original Peg and Babies uh, had a reunion and played here. And that was, that was uh, beyond special that night, so. Yeah, folks, I just wanted to show you uh, four. So four locations on this video. And believe me, uh, while I have time or when I am in Philadelphia, I will continue to follow up on other places of note to share as well. So um, I hope you have a great day. A uh, week ahead of you, and I'll see you the next episode. Thanks for watching.